Hey guys and welcome to Minimalistic. With my ongoing quest to have the cleanest setup ever, I've been shopping for a new keyboard. I had the Cooler Master Quickfire TK with Cherry MX Brown switches before and while it looked pretty clean, I was looking for something better. I came across the Anpro RGB wireless Bluetooth mechanical keyboard made by a brand named Obins. At around $100, I was surprised to find so many features in such a tiny keyboard. While 60% keyboards like this one are hard to come by with RGB lights, having both the wired and Bluetooth options is something I'd never seen before. And I had no other choice than buying it. After using it for a few weeks, would I recommend it? Well, let's find out. The keyboard comes in a pretty clean looking box. It contains the keyboard itself, a keycap puller, the micro USB cable and a Bluetooth dongle. The keyboard has a nice weight to it and feels premium. While I got the white version, it does come in various colors. The black version was advertised on the company's website but wasn't sold when I placed my order though. Then comes the switch choice. Obins uses gather on switches which are Cherry Mix copies. These have a pretty good reputation in the mechanical keyboard community and are often stated as equivalent to Cherry MX switches or even better. You can order blue, brown or red switches which gives a great variety of switch styles. I tried blues and reds in the past but I'm a pretty diehard fan of Cherry MX browns so I went with the Gateron browns. I'm pretty happy with how they feel. I would say that they're lighter than Cherry MX Browns, it's pretty much a mix between Browns and Reds, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion. However, the switches are a bit loose on the PCB so the keycaps wobble a bit more than what I'm used to. Might be an issue with my particular unit, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Other than that, they feel great and I'm glad I went with these. The layout is pretty standard, one thing to consider is that you don't get arrow keys, that's something I'm missing quite a lot, whenever I'm typing for long periods or coding I find myself a bit slower than usual. Fortunately I'm mostly using it for web browsing and like gaming so it's not that bad. I do not use much the function keys, the keypad or the other key set you get above the arrow keys so I'm pretty good on that part. Quick note here about the fact that you can still use all the keys found on the 10 keyless keyboard using the function key and the appropriate labeled keys. As an example, the arrow keys can be used with a combination of function and IJKL or WASD. Still, I don't think I'll get used to it as all my other keyboards won't support natively these key combos. Next up on the list, the keyboard has RGB lights. A few presets are included in the keyboard, but you can go in deep with the smartphone app that allows key by key configuration. The lights look amazing, it is on par with any other gaming keyboard I had in the past. The white PCB plate helps reflecting the lights as well. One thing that I find a bit annoying is that on the wireless mode, the LEDs turn off after a few minutes with no activity, but they do not light back up whenever you start typing again. So the always on LED lights are pretty much useless on the wireless mode, however the reactive LED settings seem to work all the time even on the wireless mode. The battery life is pretty good from what I've heard as I wasn't able to drain out the batteries from the time I used the keyboard. Now about that wireless mode, if you thought you could game that way, forget about that. The lag is way too much to be usable, it's already pretty noticeable when typing and it is inconsistent. Sometimes it feels pretty responsive while other times you feel the lag. However, when the keyboard is plugged in over USB, there's no noticeable lag and the keyboard performs great. The wireless connection is not that easy to set up. I highly recommend checking out the user guide that can be found on Aubin's website for detailed instructions on how to do this. However, it connects in a pretty reliable way when your devices are stored in the keyboard. You can store up to 4 devices to quickly interchange between them and that's a pretty neat feature. When the actual device in use falls asleep, it falls back to the next device that is on and connects to it. You can also use it with your phone and that is actually required to use the app to control it. The app allows to configure the LED colors but you can also change the layout and add some macros. 
Quick note here about the fact that the default Mac layout doesn't seem to support the command key and that is quite a bummer if you're on a Mac. However, I haven't tried to figure out a way to make it work, so it may still be possible. In conclusion, while it's not a perfect device, it does have some small issues here and there, I can say that the value for the money is really good and that it's a well-built keyboard. I would recommend the wired mode for gaming and the wireless mode for a more casual user that doesn't need a super reactive keyboard. While I do miss the arrow keys, that's something I knew before ordering it, so I can't really complain. Now, what would make this keyboard perfect for me? Well, it would need dedicated arrow keys, continuous LED lights on the wireless mode, and a lag-free wireless mode like my Logitech G900 gaming mouse, which always reconnects perfectly and is so responsive. Let me know in the comments if you plan to buy this keyboard, if you do, let me know if you also plan to mod it, as I will with mine, and I'd like to see what you guys come up to. If not, let me know which keyboard you're in, and I might be able to help you with your purchase decision. Thank you for watching, please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, if you didn't, please leave me a comment about what I should improve in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to Minimalistic for more tech-related content, see you in the next video!